season that he's had so far. Half a dozen tries in the top 14. Chipped over the top. Simpson has it. Gaskell has it. Back inside. Charge for the line for Jackson. And it is a dream start for Wasps. Hi everybody and welcome to Chicky's Sports Journeys. Um, exciting for me today. Uh, I have ventured into a new sport. A sport I wasn't very good at personally. Um, and I, I find the people that play it are a lot braver than me. Uh, but I am joined today by uh, ex Scotland international rugby player Rudy Jackson. How are you, mate? Yeah, all good here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Good man. Good man. Um, so, going to start pretty much taking it all the way back. So, Rudy was, uh, was born on 12th of February 1988 um, in lovely Northampton. But as Scott won't hold that against him, he's seen the, he's seen the light very quickly. Um, so yeah, you know, you, you were born in Northampton. Tell me about early early days then, and, and how quickly the change happened. Yeah, so I was. I mean, don't want to offend any any English listeners, but um, I was. Uh, I was unfortunately born in Northampton as a Scotsman. Uh, and uh, even worse is that my sister, who's two years older than me, was born in Australia. So. Um, since she's got an Aussie passport, so I think she she won on the old uh, birthing location. But I, uh, my dad was working in the oil at the time and was moving around a fair bit, and uh, ended up when I was about six months old, relocated up to Aberdeen. Um, both my parents Scottish, grandparents Scottish, so I very much uh, a Scot in in heart and blood, and uh, yeah, just. Uh, Something I keep quite quiet, the fact that I was born down south. Well, sorry, uh, sorry to bring it up. Uh, <laughs> actually, I was doing my research on you. It didn't say where you were born. So you managed to keep it's... that really quiet. Um, so, you know, real hush. You, what, what brought you back up to Aberdeen? Was it, was, was, it was, your, was your parents down there for work initially? Or were you, what, what was the reason? Yeah, just work. So, yeah, so dad, dad was jotting about with, with his job. And uh, eventually, so he's a... Uh, engineer in, in oil uh won't go to specifics of it because I, I don't really know i've never <laughs> never never questioned too too intently on it it's not not something i get excited about um so yeah but aberdeen being the, the oil capital for for a time and uh that's where we ended up relocating and, and that's where i sort of spent all my childhood uh, up until i was 18 and, and my mom and dad are still up there my wife's family's up there um so we still get up now and again but um yeah very happy in glasgow now well, you've come to a good city, mate. You've come to a good city. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you know, you've kind of touched on it already. Now, just for the viewers who, who you know, are, are, watching, are watching just now, um, Rudy is an ex-Scotland international rugby player. Um, some of the club, big clubs he's played for are Glasgow Warriors. Um, he's also played for Wasps down in, um, down in England in the Aviva Premiership, as well as some other sides. But we'll touch on all of that as we, as we go along today. But yeah, tell me a little bit more about your childhood. Um, you know, when did the love for sport begin? You know, where did you where did you go to school? Um, uh, you obviously you, you you also had some other interests in sport that I'll touch on in a little second. But tell me, <laughs> tell me, tell me a little bit more about your, your sporting background and how it came about. Yeah, I think um, both my parents and my dad was a good rugby player. Um, my mum played played a fair bit of sport as well, um, growing up and at school and things. So. And and she she loves sport as well. So I've I've had it sort of um, ingrained in me since since I was um, just a wee kid for as long as I remember. And uh, and although rugby was was a avenue that they wanted me to to follow, I, I wasn't that keen at the start. I was like most young Scottish boys, um, just loved kicking a football about, um, playing with my mates in the park and and things like that. But. They also got me involved in, in so many other sports. So I, I literally think I tried the majority of sports that I could that were in the surrounding areas. I grew up in a little village outside Aberdeen. So um, there was a fair bit of driving for my parents. It was this tiny place, Hatton of Fintrace, um, which is actually really near Stonywood. Um, 
Okay. So if any cricketers that play have played Stonywood, uh, it's, it's not far from Dice. But yeah. um, so yeah, mum, 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 and dad took me around everywhere playing golf, cricket, um, basketball, football, tennis, um, just anything I could. And then eventually. Rugby was one of probably the last ones I actually tried. Um, I mean, I was still about nine, ten years old, so it's not like I was late to it. But um, and I just fell in love with it straight away. Um, I mean, I still played heaps of sports growing up, but but rugby was was one of the sort of top two, three sports that growing up it was always the the ones I sort of looked forward to most, and was sort of playing sort of Saturday, Sundays, um, and all that sort of stuff. So it was yeah, it was. It was definitely one that I fell in love with straight away. Um, I definitely at no point in time uh, saw it as a career choice. Um, not once did a guidance teacher at school tell me that I can be a professional sportsman. Um, I, I didn't know you could earn money from it. I was just that naive. Yep. But, um, but luckily things fell into place for me. But yeah, I just, I am a big believer in just playing as many sports as you can, being outside, being active. And it's just um, definitely mo a lot of, the majority of my joyful moments as a kid was definitely on, on a sporting field. That's awesome. It's awesome. Um, it's, 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 it's good. A lot of the sports people I talk to, a lot of people, that went on, it's good that they have a good, well-rounded amount of sports that they've played in their youth. Um, you know, it's never, it doesn't, very seldom I've spoken to somebody and it's just like, oh, I played that sport and that was all I played. You know, people that play yeah. sports at the level you've gone on to play tend to have, you know, tried a bit of everything. And, and, and you must have been quite decent because, um, this is this is a story that you know I've got brought to my attention. I didn't actually know when I was playing against you all those years ago. But uh, we were int introduced to each other by a mutual friend, Tyler Buchan, um, who you know is a cracking player. Played played a lot of cricket for Aberdeenshire, played for Scotland, etc. And um, he, he mentioned to me about you know uh, have, having a good self on, um, and he said, you know, it's quite funny. You will have played against him a long time ago, and I said. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, to refresh my memory because obviously a long time ago and he said well I don't think you'll forget this game he said it was a, <laughs> it was a lovely sunny day in Glasgow at Hamilton Crescent you were playing for the North District it would have been a, a yeah. believe, under 15 game yeah. you had obviously made the long trip from Aberdeen or very very north anyway all the way across to Glasgow um, and you decided I think he's won the toss and you decided to have a bat um, and we we bowled you out for twenty. <laughs> um, and we dropped them off without losing a wicket. Um, and about yeah. the old, I remember it because I was opening the batting in that game, um, and that it just all, all kind of came back to me. Gordon Gowdy was playing in that game as well, so I always reminded That's Gowdy right. what went on <laughs> of what happened. But you can, you can hold your head up pretty high, Rudy. I mean, tell me a bit about that. Tell me a bit about that day. Uh, well, I was, it was it was actually quite a big day for me as well because I, I had a few years younger as well, so um, I was playing up a few few years, and I was sort of roped in because North North cricket's not not renowned for for being all that good. We've had a few few um, sort of good players come out of it, but as a yeah. as a collective eleven, we we weren't probably the, the strongest of the the districts, and and so. I think it was probably Tyler and his dad probably just called me up because I played with him at Aberdeenshire and uh, we were needing players. Uh, and so really excited about this, getting to go play play down in Glasgow, uh, big district game. And then, yeah, <laughs> I think I managed to say, so, so, I, I think I top scored with about nine, um, which... Well done, mate. Well done. Like, <laughs> Other guys had scored nine. You might have got a decent, might have got a decent total. Well, we might have made it a slightly longer game. It was sort of back before. I don't think we even had had lunch or anything. It was just uh, three hours down in the car, and then about an hour, hours play each way, and then back up the road. It was a, a short-lived game. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I actually I remember it really well. And uh, but yeah, just being this sort of. Bit of it, like cause I, I, when I was when I was young, I was a real sort of sporty geek, and I just remember playing and like all these boys that in your team like had all the Scotland tops on and stuff like that, and I was just like slightly in awe with it all, and I was just like, because I remember being mugged off a little bit because um, I had sort of my club kit on because I hadn't played for Scotland or anything like that at that time, yeah. and 
And uh, the, whoever was keeping that day, I don't know who it was, but he started uh, mugging me off uh, because, <laughs> because it wasn't an international. It could have been a, could have been a certain Andy Hislop. If it was somebody that was mugging you off, I can imagine it would yeah. be Andy Hislop. Quite a chunky yeah. character. So I'm sure yeah, that. as most wikis are. But um, yeah. yeah, it was a humbling experience. But, you know, as a... Uh, you go through some tough times as a sportsman, and so so some would say it was a it was a good learning curve for me, um, in how to <laughs> how to not sort of get too cut up on a devastating loss. Yeah, but. I mean it can happen. It can happen. I've been there. I mean I'm not I'm not I'm not throwing. I've been there. I've been at the other end. <laughs> some tasty defeats as well. So you yeah. know, it's sometimes good to be able to face something like that at a young age because you know you. you can only can only go up from there. I don't think you ever experienced getting bowled out for twenty eight again. I would have imagined. <laughs> but, uh, no, thankfully not. Tyler gave me some. Uh, so you can have a word with Tyler about me about this because he was he, he gave me he gave me the juicy info. <laughs> uh, it's just it's cool though that we once shared a shared a sporting field against each other. I would never have. I would. I would. I would never have, have, have remembered that. So it, no. it's, it's pretty cool. And then listen, your sporting career got got a lot better from there. Um, and thought, you know, maybe that was the day that you decided that cricket wasn't the route you were going to go down. Um, but talk to me about, talk to me about your, your your junior days and, and where you started making your way in rugby, uh, because obviously I know where your professional career started. But tell me a bit more about your early successes um, in junior sport. Yeah, so I I played sort of uh, I ended up so I say I grew up in a, a, a tiny small village um, and come about primary six, uh, I got moved into the, the big bad school. Uh, so we got, got taken into the city and, and went to a rugby playing school, which we think we're pretty much one of the only ones in Aberdeen and Robert Gordon's. Um, so got taken there, but I still carried on playing club rugby as well. So uh, as I mentioned, I was playing Saturday and Sunday, so Aberdeen grammar. Uh, so yeah, I was just playing as much rugby as possible. So we'd be training at school. So we get lucky enough that at the school we'd get sort of games lessons during the week. So you'd be playing rugby a few times a week um, and then playing on the weekend as well. So it was just, just playing as much as possible and and had a really good sort of, we had a pretty good good team as well. We're lucky that, and, and still friends with a lot of the boys I grew up playing rugby with, which is, uh, which is really nice. And, uh, and yeah, we, it was always good fun. We had a good team, as I say. Um, it wasn't always perfect um, when it gets to the district sort of level as well. Um, I always remember sort of the under, under 15 level, I think it was. Um, our, our, our regions got split into like Caledonia, which was essentially the north, and then borders east and west. Um, and, and I didn't make the, the district team in the under 15s. And uh, as a young kid and who just loves rugby, it's, it, was, uh, it was pretty tough to take. And uh, and pretty demoralising. And uh, but yeah, my mum, mum and dad both really level-headed, really good with me. And they were just um, were just like, just it'll be all right. Just ask the coach uh, why you weren't picked and stuff like that. And and so I did. Went back to them, and then he gave me a few things to work on. And I just went away and I practiced those things. And and I think that was a good sort of lesson at a young age that you're going to have knockbacks. Uh, the other good people in your positions that you're going to have to compete with and and you've got to sort of work that extra extra sort of bit hard than, than the other people around you and and having that dialogue with coaches and and finding out areas that they think you can work on and, and having that respect uh, for them and uh, it definitely paid dividends and then got picked the next year for districts and then it got moved into under 18s and, and that's when you sort of make national stuff um, there's not as many so sort of national stuff as there would be in crickets and other sort of from under 13s and stuff like that, you can be picked into sort of the, the national setup. Um, and, and so, yeah, it was sort of a so is that not the same? Is that, so, so you don't get, you wouldn't get under 13 Scotland. I've never actually, this, this is going to be like an educational piece for me. Because <laughs> you know, I, I've watched a lot of people that I know a lot of people that play it. But I've never really been seen much. I, I was more football. I had I seen a football system coming through. So you wouldn't yeah. get Scotland all the way through the junior setup. Would there then be like an under nineteen team eventually? Yeah. So it gets. Um, so it's it's changed throughout the years a little bit, and it's probably a little bit better now. Uh, and there's probably identification systems in place for for younger younger people. But certainly from up north. Um, 
we sort of get overlooked a little bit. Most, most stuff's done in the central belt, um, Edinburgh, Glasgow, uh, sort of Persia, Sterling maybe. But, but when you get a bit further north, it's, it's hard because resources are, aren't that, that readily available. So um, it's, it's sometimes quite easy to slip through the net up there. Um, but yeah, so I, national stuff doesn't start until under 18s. Um, you have some district stuff, uh, varying different levels. It's like sort of tier, it used to be tiered. I don't know what it is now. Um, it was a long, long, long time ago that I, I was playing back then. But um, we had sort of like northeast stuff, and then it moved up into the sort of the big Caledonia region. So covered, covered everywhere from uh, Dunfermline up to to Wick. Um, so we were always a bit of a ragtag sort of team. It's from sprawled all, all over everywhere where it was and then the other districts were like very Edinburgh school boys uh, yeah. were always really strong and then the the West Coast boys were pretty pretty tough and rough and uh, yeah. and normally a lot bigger than <laughs> bigger than the most of them um, and then the borders were, were sort of the hotbed of rugby uh, back in the day so it was always tough uh, being up north but we, as I say we were we were pretty blessed in our, my age group that we actually had a really good good year, certainly in my school and the club. Uh, and we were all actually, my school was the first, so it was, my year was the first year our school had made the Scottish National Finals. Um, we'd always been a pretty average rugby playing school, although we, we are a rugby school, but always dominated by Edinburgh schools and, and the odd and dollar and stuff like that in, in sort of mm-hmm. the central belt. And so, like my year, we we got to the final. Uh, unfortunately, had another bit of a spanking. So um, I've I've been privy to a few few heavy defeats in my in my youth. Um, but yeah, and and so I think from that, the fact that my my school year and, and the club team uh, were pretty good on the whole, and we were always competing for sort of national titles and district titles, and we sort of I'm not saying we put put it on the map, but it was. Um, we probably got a bit more recognition than than previous years have have done. Um, certainly, that up in Aberdeen, mm-hmm. uh, we actually had a few guys in the national setup. Uh, certainly, the district setup, and and so that was quite good. So I think I was very lucky that I was because um, I think if it, I'd played maybe a few years before, it would have been even harder to sort of get into the system and would have been easily overlooked. And and even I and even so, I was still still pretty lucky because when I was eighteen, I played in a sevens tournament. So I, so a smaller version of, of rugby, so seven aside. And the, just so happened that the Glasgow Warriors coach at the time was at that tournament and saw me play. And that was what actually got me my, my sort of academy contract as an 18-year-old because okay. um, I, I tore my hamstring playing for Scotland under 18s. And so I didn't play any of the actual tournament. Um, and then, yeah, I just got a phone call. I was meant to be going off to Australia to do a gap year and then go to uni. Um, and then Glasgow Warriors coach Sean calls me up and he was like, oh, so you're playing at this tournament. I, I've got a bit about you. Do you fancy coming and joining the academy? And I was like, and it was like, I think it was about £6,000. I was just like, I'm in. Little <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I know that it, it doesn't, £6,000 doesn't get you very far. But yeah. Um, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so I moved down to Glasgow as an 18-year-old and, and that was my, my step into professional rugby. So how was how was um how was that for you? That's a big move as an eighteen year old. I mean, I was I was seventeen when I moved away and I went to London and I can remember it. it was, it's a big it's a big change. I mean, you're away from the comforts of your home. Um, you know, mum and dad aren't there; they taxi you around anymore. You know, how was it coming to coming to Glasgow as an eighteen year old? Yeah, it was it was nerve wracking, um, and at, at that time as well, it was the only experience I had at Glasgow was coming down for the old rugby game and the humiliation uh, at playing cricket against you. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and, and all I knew of it was, it was, it was pretty rough and that's what it gets sort of hyped up to be as a, somebody from the outside. Yeah. Um, so I was like, Oh God, here we go. Moving to somewhere that I don't really fancy. Like I knew Edinburgh really well. Cause that's where my, my parents, well, my mum sort of grew up a bit. Mm-hmm. My dad was from, from down in Melrose and the borders, but, um, so, so I knew the East Coast a bit, but I really didn't know Glasgow at all. Um, obviously, didn't know anybody at, at the rugby club. I didn't know. Like, so suddenly, I was like this eighteen-year-old and got chucked into training. I was playing against Scot. I was training against Scotland internationals, and I was like, "This is just mind blowing." I'm like, "What is going on?" And it was just, it was exciting, but it was nerve wracking. I 
barely knew how to cook. And like, I didn't know anything about money. As I said, I didn't, I thought 6,000 pounds was a lot of money for, for a contract, but, um, I'm sure you, I'm sure you, I'm sure you'd worked out pretty quickly when that started <laughs> flying out of your pocket. But then a month or six <laughs> months that, oh dear, not very much money. Big time. Um, so yeah, so it was, it was a big learning curve and, but I loved it and it was just, just awesome. Um, to sort of just get to train and play rugby every day of my life. It was just, uh, it was just a crazy, crazy time. And then at that, like I still had a place at uni, but, um, quickly realized that wasn't the route I wanted to go down. Um, and just stuck it out with, with the rugby and sort of had two years in the academy there and then signed my first full-time contract in, in 2008. Um, and, and yeah, it was, a yeah, it was, it was pretty awesome. And, and it was definitely by that time was loving Glasgow uh, and what Glasgow had to offer. So, yeah, you must have had, um, you kind of had, a, you had your two years to kind of show your worth, settle into the club, you know, impress the coaches. Um, you know, were, were the guys good with you? Or did you have some tough moments? Because, you know, I know as an academy as an academy player, sometimes you can get given a, quite a lot of crap from the senior players just to let you know that, you know, it's not going to be easy. Was it, was that, did you face quite a bit of that? Yeah, definitely. Like, they were, like don't get me wrong, they were, totally sound and really really good guys and, and pretty inclusive um it was definitely back then like it was still relatively new to the professional game and and so there's still that quite old school mentality um where you you do have to earn your stripes um which i think's great i think um you do have to have that respect i think and and do stuff but yeah you i i literally if somebody wanted a coffee and they asked me for a coffee, I had to go do it. It was just literally no, no questions asked. It was like, no, you're doing that. And, and I was quite like a cocky individual, not cocky individual, but I was like com- very self-confident um, okay. in, in, in every, in every sort of most aspects of life. And I was just like, there was a few moments where I did sort of just have to take a, take a humbling and, and realize that I am at the, the bottom of the food chain here. And uh, yeah, no matter what it's, uh, I've got to to earn my earn my stripes, really earn their respect, and and that's done by by hard work and and just being a good person as well. And I think that's one of the great things about rugby. I think um, you don't get to sort of have that ego arrogance for for very long. Um, it gets gets Some beaten out of you, and, and, and yeah. in training very quickly. I'd imagine you know in cricket, exactly. You, you, you know, if you can't bowl really quick in cricket, you know, the quick bowler gets to terrorise somebody at some point. But other than that, you, you know, you can't be shoulder barging or not taking somebody out. <laughs> but in rugby, I imagine if you, if, you not, if you rub somebody up the wrong way, they can, they can straighten you out pretty quickly. Um, yeah, so tell me, definitely. Very, very, very proud moment. Um, 2008, you're offered a professional contract with the Glasgow Warriors. Uh, proud moment for your family, I'd imagine, mother and father, all the taxiing around, all the effort put <laughs> into it. Um, so what, what age would you be at this point? Are you maybe 20, 21? Yeah, so just, yeah, so I'd have been 20, turning 21 that year, yeah. So, so it was, uh, yeah, were, it was awesome. What, yeah, so. what, was some of the, what were some of the names when you were assigned, um, some, of the, some of the internationals uh, that you would have been at that point? So... When I signed sort of full time, there was um well Al Kellock was the sort of he was the captain, um, big second row boy, played played a lot for Scotland. Um in terms of the other sort of big names at that time, the the Evans brothers had just sort of turned up as well. So Tom and Max Evans, who are probably now famous more for their off field exploits than uh than the rugby. Um two very good looking, charismatic uh guys who yeah. <laughs> And, uh, and yeah, doing doing all right for themselves. Um, but yeah, <laughs> they're pretty famous. And then uh, for me, like he did, he wasn't there right at the start. Um, but a guy, Chris Costa, came, came on board, uh, and he was like, a, hopefully he doesn't see it because uh, he is he's a mate now. So I don't want to run him too much. But he was uh, he went to the same school as me, and he was it was about six years difference. And uh, so he was a bit of a legend in my eyes and sort of, um, and, and of the school. So like to, to play with him was, was pretty cool. Um, and then, so that was, that was a cool, cool moment from it myself. Um, i trying to think who back, back in the day, there was uh, any good old school uh, guys. But, um, and then there was some of the, the, 
the slightly older but young upstarts who sort of made a name for themselves, like John Barkley, Johnny BT, Kelly Brown. Uh, they were all kicking about and stuff like that. So there was, uh, yeah, there was some good talent and, and some big physical boys. And I was just this young skinny kid um, who thought thought he was pretty talented. But um, yeah, oh, that, it was. Yeah, uh, I've, watched, I've, watched, I've watched some videos, mate. I mean, you, you, you I've seen one video in particular. Um, and, and what I can see from you is you have you had a lot of all round talent. I mean, you were very good with the ball in your hand, very good at kicking, very quick. Obviously, you are like you say one of the, probably the smaller guys. You would probably have been in the on the rugby field, but you made good you made good use of that. In particular, I was really impressed with one try that I seen where you kicked and ran, and then you picked the ball. You managed to time the ball, and it's not easy with a rugby ball. I mean, it does different things. It moves in different ways, and you were gone. And the guy, I mean, there were <laughs> some big boys chasing you in the video I seen, but they were, they were, they were, they weren't getting, they weren't getting anywhere near you. It's funny you mentioned the name Donny Beatty. I mean, I played district cricket with him as a youngster, and we tried to wrestle him once in the in the dons, <laughs> and there was about seven or eight of us. And we tried from we, were, we would not give up. We just kept trying, and this is when we were like fifteen years old, and we got yeah. launched in every corner of this dorm. Like nobody could even move him. He was just. <laughs> We were hanging off of him, but he's a big. I mean, he went on to be a. He's a. He was a. He's a big, big, big unit. So yeah. you made your name pretty quickly, though, because you know, first cut, two thousand and eight, you sign your you sign your contract. Um, two thousand and ten, you make your you make your Scotland debut. So tell me about your first couple of years in Glasgow Warriors and some of the kind of the big moments, and just for the viewers as well. I believe you you started predominantly as a fullback. And then later in your uh, career, and you you went into fly half. Is that is that right? Other other way around. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, so you started as a, started as a fly half, and laterally in your career yeah. you went into go back. So at this point you would have been predominantly a fly half. Yeah. Yeah. So um. So yeah. So it was at the time. Uh, so Dan Parks was uh the sort of Scottish fly half at the time, and Glasgow. Um, he was an Aussie Aussie kilted Scot. Um. Really top bloke, um, really good good mate with him. Uh, he was at the sort of the more experienced end of the spectrum when I when I was coming in. So he was sort of mentored me, but just um, yeah. So I learned a lot off him. But obviously, as a, a young upstart as well, I was going in to take his position, and uh, and I was l- lucky at the well. My first my first year as a full time pro, I actually dislocated my shoulder in the first game of the season I think it was um, scoring, a, scoring a try to, to sort of seal the victory um, so it was a very bittersweet moment um, and so I was out for a good few months um, which is as a youngster it was heartbreaking so you just wanted to be out there training trying to get, get in game time and mm-hmm. but I was just in the physio room um, so that was quite tough but then thankfully after that um, I think I think Parks may maybe Second year, so sort of maybe got a bit of an injury, which allowed me some some good game time as a as a youngster. And and at that time, there wasn't many other sort of top fly halves competing. Um, it was a position that was sort of sought after as a as a as the Scotland the Scotland national team. And yep. so I was young, I was sort of young and and quite like people were quite excited that that I sort of came on 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 board. And and there was an opportunity that that I might might be able to take sort of Dan Park's position or at least create competition there. And, uh, and yeah, and then there was, I think a lot of people like in the sort of rugby world or certainly in the Scottish rugby world will, um, they'll sort of see the, the game that sort of really brought, brought me to life was a, a European cup game against Bath down in England. And it was uh, my first European start. I think Dan was injured and, and I just had one of those games where just everything came off. Um, and actually, in and the Bath at the time were were a top team, and and we were still like up and coming. We we weren't that great or that well regarded as a as a team, certainly in Europe. And uh, and we gave them a real scare. Um, and I I could have actually won the game if I was if I was a bit faster. I could have maybe won us the game. Game. I, uh, they were a few points ahead, and it was literally the last play. And I got a, got an interception on our, on our try line, and so I had a hundred meters to run. Um, and one of the fast blokes in my team was next to me. Um, and so I was going to just draw the, the last defender and give it to him. But he just fell over. He fell over his own feet. And I was like, oh, shit. 
I'm going to have to do this next, <laughs> this whole thing. Um, but I just ran out of steam. Um, and, and unfortunately, they, they got the ball back. But um, yeah, that was the sort of my, my coming of age game that sort of put me on the map as a potential international player and, um, and kicked on from there and, and was lucky enough. And I think it was 2010, I got my, my yeah, first two, game for Scotland. 2010, and not just a small game. Um, <laughs> you, uh, you, you were on the bench to start with. Mm-hmm. Um, you came, came on as a sub against the mighty All Blacks. You know, <laughs> you must pinch yourself. You must still pinch yourself sometimes in, uh, at, when, you're, when you're looking back at your career. And you, you know, you debuted against the, one of the powerhouses of uh, of the of, of rugby. I mean, who would have been in that? Who I mean, would, who would have been some of the names playing in the in the All Blacks at that time? Um, so Dan Carter was was on the pitch when I when I made my debut. So as a as a fly half, um, playing against arguably the the best fly half um, ever, uh, possibly him and Johnny Wilkinson. Um, so that was pretty cool. Um, he did. Step me and run past me, which was a bit bit embarrassing. Um, trying to think who else would have been playing. Uh, they had they they had a pretty full full team out, and they gave us a pound a pound in that day as well. Um, okay. So it was it was a shame because you would have loved to be in in a competitive game with them, but it was also quite nice where I could just come on and sort of just enjoy the moment and and just throw the ball about and have a real crack at them. And, uh, what and minute? So, yeah, so yeah, what, and then, what minute did you come on? I was sort of maybe 65, 70, so it was like 15 minutes, I think, we played maybe. 15, 15 um, minutes. What, what, were the, what were the nerves like when, you, when the coach gave you the nod and said, right, you're, you're going on? Uh, it, it was, yeah, it was nerve-wracking. So I think they just, they just scored a try as well. And so like my first act as an as a international player was restarting the game with a, with a drop kick, which can be, when the nerves are going, it can be a pretty scary thing. So you could be like, I could absolutely shank this and look like a complete idiot. Um, but thankfully, I, I, I struck it all right, and I think we actually almost won the ball back as well. But um, so yeah, to get that that kick away and that sort of just settled the nerves. But it was um, it was yeah, it was a, <laughs> an intense moment to say the least. Yeah, yeah. that must have been. Listen, um, that must have been that must have been something really special. Two weeks later, um, you came off the bench again um, to play against Samoa. Um, and if I'm right here in saying, you kicked the winning penalty in the 80th minute, um, and the game was played at Aberdeen, which must have been quite a proud moment because you must have had a few family and friends in the in the crowd that day. To, uh, Mum and dad must have got to see their see their boy, you know, performing in that stage. But tell me, tell me about your memory of that day. Um, yeah, that's that's without doubt um, probably the best day. Day of my career, just with just with the way everything was. I am Aberdeen football fan, so playing at Pataudry was was pretty awesome. Anyway, um, coming on and, and kicking the winning goal was was amazing, but the most nerve wracking moment of my life as well. Um, yep. Definitely was where was, it was from? worse where, than was it quite a long. Was it quite a long, quite a long kick? No, so it was it was a relatively easy kick on the ground scheme of things. So it's so there's no easy kick, so there's trend. no easy kick in the 80th minute when you when the game's on the line. No, definitely. So it was on the angle. So on the 15 meter line, about 20, 25 meters back. So it wasn't too too long or anything. There was a bit of an angle on it, but I just remember um, <clears throat> going back in my run up and sort of my leg just started shaking, Oof. like, and I couldn't stop it, and I was just like. How the hell am I supposed to kick this ball? I was like, heart just going, my legs moving. I'm just like, I've got a chance to win the game here. I was like, I, but I genuinely thought I'd potentially miss the ball because I was just like, I couldn't control my leg. I was just like, um, so I was proper bricking it. And then it's just one of those things. And like, like cricket as well. It's once you do things so many times, like you've you've got your setup, you've got your run up. Um, You've got if you're in cricket, it's the bowling or the batting. Like it sort of suddenly becomes instinctive um, mm-hmm. because you've done that um, thing so many times. Mm-hmm. So thankfully, um, it didn't break down in that moment when I actually started my run up and I kicked the ball. But I just remember I just I couldn't control my leg. I was just like, this is going to be so embarrassing for me. But mm-hmm. as soon as I kicked it and I looked up and it, it thankfully went straight through the middle and. Um, <laughs> Whistle went and the boys just came and like picked me up and then 
yeah, I just remember walking around the pitch and seeing so many people that I knew, like had friends from school, had family, my my wife's family were there, like, and it was just um, kids from my school and stuff as well. So it was, it was a pretty cool moment. And the night out was unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> you would have known, you would have known the local venues, I'd imagine, pretty well. Yeah. And from what I know of rugby boys, I mean, you don't, you don't, you don't hold back when you when you get a big victory like that. Um, so you know, listen. <laughs> You, uh, what, what, you know, that when I was reading up on it, I was thinking that must have been, you know, being an Aberdeen boy, that must have been it because it's unusual as well to see an international game played in Aberdeen. I mean, yeah. it, doesn't ha- it doesn't happen very often, you know, it tends to be at Murrayfield, um, yeah. the whole game, or maybe I, I think occasionally in Glasgow, but I've, it's, I've never, I, I don't remember watching Scotland play a, a, inter- a full international in Aberdeen. So, you know, that's it's, it's one of those days you're going you're gonna to cherish for. For as long, you know, one what what to tell the grand one to tell the grandkids about as well. Um, Definitely. So you were you, you went on for so you you, you then you, you were you were with Glasgow for quite a while. You obviously signed with them in two thousand and eight, um, and in two thousand and thirteen, um, they decided that um, they weren't going to renew your contract. What was there any reasons, or what, were you given any? Re- what 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 was the what was the reason for that? Yeah, it was pretty pretty tough for me because I like at the time I was I was loving playing for Glasgow. Um, we were a team that were really on the up as well. So as I say, when we when I started out, we were whipping boys of the league, and then um, we okay, we started. We just went on this crazy run. We had a really good core group of guys who some of my best mates as well, and we just got better and better each year. And we started like getting to semi finals, finals, and and competing for for the title, and and then. That year, just it was myself, a guy Duncan Weir, and uh, Finn Russell, who um, is well known these days. And we were sort of all in the same position. We were all in around the Scotland squad, or Finn certainly was about to be. Um, and at the time, I was probably on the most money. Um, so, from the SOU's point of view, who, who don't have heaps of cash, they were like, well, potentially got three internationals playing in one spot. Um, who should we move on? And I think <laughs> my, my head was the obvious one to, to put on that block. Um, so it was a shock. <clears throat> I was still playing lots for them. I was a good relationship with uh, Gregor Towns and the coach at the time. Um, and so it, it was a shock. And, and up until that point, because I'd been the young guy and I'd gotten to the Scotland squad, every sort of contract renegotiation was really simple. It was just like, yeah, we want to keep you. Blah, blah. So I'd never thought about leaving, looking for elsewhere. And I didn't sort of realize this, realize the stresses that um, it brought. Um, Cause you get, you get all these like bits of interest from people and, and people from the outside will see an international guy looking for a new club and thinking, Oh, he'll be all right. Mm-hmm. But it's quite hard unless you're like a yep. top, top player, like a Stuart Hogg or a Greg Gladelow or, like it's tough to to really crack into to some of these, especially like English teams or French teams. They're looking for those superstars, mm-hmm. especially down in England because they've got this quota where they get money for playing English qualified players. So they don't really, unless you're a superstar, they don't really like people coming in and sort of blocking that um, route to to being a first team player. So I found it really hard. Teams would be like, "Oh yeah, we're interested," but then they'd find somebody else. So. Mm-hmm. And so there's a lot of uh, nerves coming into it, but then thankfully Wasps took a took a chance on me, and and uh, so I went down to London uh, and loved it, and it couldn't have worked out better for me really, um, barring my first, the second game of the season, I tore my ACL. But, yeah, um, no, I've seen that. You started out with an injury, which would have been quite tough. I mean, you would have been wanting to make a mark down there and just hit the ground running. Um, but how did they treat you with your injury? Were they were they understanding and it gave you gave you your time to to get back back to full fitness? Yeah, they were awesome. Um, so Di Young, who's a ex Welsh guy, he was the head coach or director of rugby at the time, and and he was brilliant. Um, so second game of the season, yeah, tore my ACL, which for, for anyone that doesn't know is a is a long long rehab. Um, six to nine months is the sort of given time uh, and I think I ended up mine was about I was back fit to play after nine but just the way the season was it was coming to the end and 
they're like, oh, there's no point. There's only a handful of games left. So I think it was 11 months before I played my, my next game after that injury. But, um, but yeah, it was just, it was really hard mentally because I'd, I just say, we wanted to make your mark. I'd, I felt like I was playing really well. And that game, I actually came on and sort of made a real good impact. And I was really, I was just feeling really good about it. And it was so innocuous. Uh, I just, no contact, no nothing. I just sort of stepped off my, my left leg and my knee just buckled and, and popped my ACL. Um, but yeah, so the physio team were great. Got met like best sort of surgeon um, for the knee. Uh, I think I was in after Theo Walcott um, in my operation. So <laughs> it's like <laughs> slightly different levels. But you know, um, at least you know Jerry was definitely a good surgeon then because I don't think Arsenal would have been sending one of their boys to, to somebody who wasn't top of their game. So that was good to know that you had the best of the best. Exactly. So it's comforting, and 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 they could have theoretically cut my contract um, after certain nine months. But he died. Reassured me. He was like, "Look, we're not going to do anything stupid. Um, take your time, get back fit, and and have a crack at it next year." And it was actually for the Scotland team the following summer. So when I finally got back fit, it was a World Cup year. So my first um, sort of for it, test of the knee was some international warm up games. Um, in the run up to the World Cup 2015, which unfortunately I didn't get picked for. Um, I actually thought I'd, I'd played really well and, and trained really well, but unfortunately it wasn't to be. But actually it was probably really good for me because it meant I got a good full full start of the season with the Wasps and uh, and I, I had a really good year with them and, and absolutely loved my time down at Wasps. No. Yeah, so that was playing, you know, you're playing top, 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 top league there. You know, I beat, I beat my premiership. Um, I've watched a bit of the Viva Premiership. It's a you know it's a high a high level high level of rugby. Do you feel like the standard was much is a big is a big difference in standard um, south of the border? It's it's different. Uh, I wouldn't I say one one's better than the other. I'd I'd just say the the sort of style of play and and I think probably the way they approach training and and games is slightly different because. With the Pro 14, um, there's no relegation. So most teams are really geared out to just go out and try and attack and win. Um, and it's quite quite exciting. There's, I mean, there's, there are different styles of plays. We've got Italian teams and, and stuff like that. But certainly the, the way Glasgow wanted to play, it was sort of all-out attack. Um, whereas down south, you've got the threat, threat of relegation. Um, and the, the teams are probably just... A little bit more physical and, and, and bigger and bit and it's more relentless because they just want to put the best team out on the pitch every week. So if you're in that sort of mould, you you don't really get any chance to have a rest. Where mm -hmm. with Glasgow and stuff like that, we've always had really good a really good sort of big squad that we could rotate players. Guys could get rest, so you're probably feeling fresher throughout the season. Whereas um, the Premiership's just a big slog, um, and then you, it's just dripped with sort of world-class talent um, a lot because of, they've got a bit more a lot of um, overseas boys playing the, playing the English League the Kiwis and the Australians and stuff I, you know from what I've seen I've seen quite a lot of those those guys playing in those leagues so that must have been quite a you know he must have got to be at rub shoulders with some some pretty top 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 level top level players day, week in week out and playing against them as well do you feel your your game improved during that in that period yeah, definitely. Um, as you say, because there's more money um, in the English clubs, there's it's a bigger draw for these sort of overseas um, guys, like the, the Aussies and Kiwis and stuff like that. So it, it's that's pretty cool. Um, I was playing. Like, I was pretty lucky um, to play with some some incredible guys down down at Wasps. Um, with the likes of George Smith, who's an Aussie legend. Uh, guy Charles Pieta, who who didn't actually play too many times for New Zealand, but he moved over here quite young. Um, probably one of the most talented players I've, I've sort of seen. And then, and then some of the English guys as well. And, and there's obviously that Scottish-English sort of historical bit of, bit of crack there, but they, they were all really sound and they were just yeah. rugby players. It was just, yeah. just like they are the world over and, and got, still got some really good mates down there. Um, and so, so, yeah, I actually loved my time down there and definitely felt like I improved as a player. Just being sort of open to sort of new, new ways of playing, training, um, learning off, 
different guys and experiences and, and, and it was awesome. And I was lucky when I was at Wasp that we were, we were a pretty good team and, and we were playing and we got, I think my last year, we got to the semifinals of both Europe and, and the Premiership and unfortunately just fell short um, against the likes of Saracens and stuff. So it was, um, it was a shame, shame that we didn't quite, quite kick on and, and get some silverware, but um, to be, be involved in those sort of real big games, it was, um, it was a cool, cool experience. Well, you must have impressed because May 2016, rival club, Harlequins, um, offer you a contract. Um, that, you know, did you, did you see that coming? Did you think your time at Wasp was, I mean, it sounds, it sounds like from when the injury, you came clear of the injury, it sounds like you, you, you were, you performed, you know, really, really well. And you set, you seemed to settle into, you know, a lot of players, sometimes these big changes, you know, can it can be difficult to deal with, especially after such a serious injury. You know, you, you it could challenge you mentally. You know, if, if you're going to bring the best out of yourself again, or if you're going to feel, you know, but, but it sounds like it was a really good change for you um, in your career at that point. Probably sad to leave Glasgow at the time, but it sounds like you kind of took to it and you and you were welcomed there. But then a rival club to come in and offer you to go with. Did you see that coming? No, it was it was a really strange one and. Uh... And it probably wasn't. It was, it was, I'll try and explain this as well as possible. It was a <laughs> it was a strange scenario because Wasp just offered me another contract, um, and I was, as I say, I was loving my time, really settled in, great bunch of boys. Wife was pretty settled, like she she'd made good friends, and and it was all looking really good. Um, and I didn't really go looking for for another opportunity until. Uh, I had a pretty good, good, honest conversation with with Dai Young, the the director of rugby, and he had informed me that this guy Danny Cipriani uh, was coming back. Whoever's decision that was, I don't need to go into those details. But it essentially, meant again I was going to be in a, a three way battle for for my position. Whereas before it was sort of myself and this uh, Kiwi guy Jimmy Gopperth, who we we were pretty much played fifty fifty and and had a really good relationship and. and complemented each other quite well and then suddenly there's going to be a third sort of uh, person to battle with and, and he was he hadn't been signed as a as a guy who was going to be a squad player so we discussed things with uh, and he was like if you want to look elsewhere you can um, and so I was like oh, I'll just spoke to my agent and I was like look is there any clubs looking for, for a 10 because I don't want to be stuck not playing at all mm-hmm. And so he, we did some digging and, and Harlequins, who had Nick Evans, who was an absolute stalwart, Kiwi, Kiwi boy legend uh, of the club. He was sort of coming to the end of his career. And so they, they came and offered me a contract and it looked like a really good fit. And, uh, and made, I, I felt I made all the decisions for, for the right, right reasons. And, but then the head coach who had signed me left to take a job uh, with Italy. Right, and then suddenly there's a new new coach who hadn't signed me and uh, had a different vision uh, for, for the foreseeable future. Yeah. Yeah. So my my time my time at Harlequins was a bit rocky. Um, I played a fair bit for the first sort of six months um, and felt I was playing pretty well and contributing. But Harlequins were in a real transition period as well. They've got I mean they've got some world class players as well, but. Um, for whatever reason, just weren't clicking and, and we ended up sort of floating around the mid-table. The last couple of months, I just wasn't playing at all and I'd signed a three-year deal and, and got told that I could look for clubs elsewhere and I was just like, I was like, talk about deflating. I was just like, yeah, yeah. just come off the back of a great year with Wasps. Things were looking quite good. I was still in the international fold and just couldn't, couldn't get a game and, and and as a sportsman you you know you want to be all you want to do is play at the weekend it's like you make all the sacrifices you do all the work just for that that moment so for us for that 80 minutes uh and and I just wasn't getting that and and so I was pretty dark mentally um I wasn't in a happy place um and and so it's tough I was getting married that year as well so it was a it was a weird one so that that was at least a welcome distraction but um I'd almost signed for, for another club, but again, that fell through. Uh, and then literally I got married. 
on on a Saturday. I after my wedding, I drove from Scotland down to London to start my next preseason with Harlequins. Mm-hmm. So I did Monday, Tuesday, got a phone call on Tuesday. Uh, it was like, when can you start with Glasgow? And uh, and managed to get, they'd managed to organize a deal back at Glasgow. So on Thursday, I was driving back up the road to, to, to Glasgow to start training there. This is, why I love, this, is why I love, this is why I love my city. You know, it, it made, when I was looking through your story, it made me kind of, I thought there would be some interesting things in the middle of this because, you know, you seem to be going really well. But it just shows for any sport, young sports people out there, you know, how to deal with adversity. It can come at any time. You could be flying. You could be at the top of your game. And it's just something like a coach change. I mean, he didn't mean to do that to you, but he obviously got offered a, an international yeah. gig. So off he went. And then maybe your face just didn't quite fit as well with the, with the new coach. You had, in, you know, but then I get, you know, the injury could have been, the injury could have stopped you from having that, but you managed to come through that and have, have great memories at was. Didn't quite work out at Harlequins, but you came back in 2017 uh, to, to lovely Glasgow and you re-signed with the Glasgow Warriors. Um, you extended your contract further into 2018 as well. Tell me about your, was that was that a good was that a good time for you in your career? Oh, that without doubt, that was probably that year was probably the most enjoyable year of my my career. Um, just for a number of things, like I. As a person, I changed heaps. Um, my mindset had changed. Um, but obviously, gone through a few dark moments, and and coming out the back of it, it was just I don't know. I just I just came back up with this mindset where I was just like, because I was I was close to thinking about retirement. I was just like, mm-hmm. I was it was it was really shit, and I was just like, what's the point? Mm-hmm. Lost the love, and I was just like. And even the Glasgow move, it was funny. Like Dave Rennie was, he was a new coach at Glasgow that time, a, a New Zealand guy. I don't think he was that fussed about me either. He he hadn't wanted me. It was the guys in in the Scottish Rugby Union, so a guy Scott Johnson who was working things at the time. He wanted to get me back up, mm-hmm. and uh, and not a lot, of, quite a lot of people dislike Scott Johnson, and he, he's gone back off to Australia to work. But for what he did to me uh, during that period. Uh, I'll I'll be pretty grateful to him, uh, and so so I'll 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 fight his corner. But um, I came back and just I was like, oh, look, let's just see what happens. Just if I play, I play. If I, if I don't, I don't. And just try and enjoy being back home and and enjoy enjoy life really. And I was this is when my positional change happened as well. And Stuart Hogg, Stuart Hogg had a for. Unfortunately for him, I had a horrible year with injuries, and we we didn't have another fullback. So Dave Rennie just he chucked me in. I literally I was back for a couple of weeks, and he was like, I was playing in a preseason game and and played at fullback and and went pretty well. And then so started the season, and and just I pretty much played almost I think nearly every minute of the uh, of all the matches that year, and right. and ended up winning Player of the Year, and and we we got to oh we got to the semi final I think, but um. Should have should have really kicked on and won. We were we had a really good team that year and playing really well, but we just ran out of steam. I think we just probably the way we were training and things like that. We just didn't quite quite peak it at the right time. But um, yeah, it was just like a new lease of life. I felt like a new player. I was just enjoying my rugby. I, I wasn't getting caught up in whether it was social media or or what what people thought of me. And I was just like, I'm just going to go out and play and play with a smile on my face and. And try help what was a pretty young squad, and and impart some of my experience on them, and and try and help the squad any way I can. And and just luckily for me, I just played played a shitload and and played really well, and uh, and it was just yeah, I just loved it, and it was just like uh, just felt like a new new kid again. It sounds, yeah, it sounds like you were when you were back when you were eighteen, when you just enjoy. Yeah, it was professional sport is is tough. You have moments where you're you know you you just think. It, you don't something you have mornings sometimes. I mean, I've been there where you're like, I don't really feel like going to the ground today, you know, and that's a horrible feeling yeah. to have because when you're a kid, you will you need to be dragged off the sporting field, you know, and <laughs> professional sport can be a little bit more, you know, it can have its tough moments. And you've certainly seen, you know, th- different types of tough moments along the way. Um, and it's you know, you sound like you were just you know enjoying it again, and very mm. interesting to get a positional change. 
Is that where you where you think the coach? Is that where you think you know it was smart coaching by him to see that well, I think he could build the role and build back, and and then you go on and get player of the year. Yeah, yeah, I think it was a bit bit of luck, I guess. Um, he took he probably took a bit of a gamble because I don't think he really knew what type of player I was. He I was sort of just chucked in front of him, and he was just like he was like, <laughs> so what do I do with you? And it was just there was just a, a, a gap to fill, and and I mean without sort of bigging myself up too much, like I guess what, like a couple of my strongest assets as a, as a rugby player are sort of, I'm, I'm a smart player. I've never been blessed with sort of all the physical attributes of some people. Um, and so I've had like, so sort of probably a, a back my skill set because of probably my childhood of mm-hmm. being growing up playing different things. So I, I'm quite a skillful player, but also like my rugby brain and, and we pitch as rugby IQ um, I, I back has been, been one of the best around. So was, I had to learn a fair bit in a short period of time, but being a, a smart player, I guess I, I sort of managed to adapt to it, to it pretty quickly. And yeah, so, but, um, but yeah, so it, it was, I think it was a bit of luck, but, um, and yeah, but, and, but Dave Rennie is a smart coach and, and he sort of got the best out of me. Um, and I enjoyed working with him. So, um, so I had an enjoyable few years under him. And then another good. So is that what kind of led into the, the Scotland selection again? You had a you had a tour um, where you, if I'm right, you're saying you toured Canada, USA, and Argentina. Um, you started the game against Canada. Did you, did you go to all these different countries, or was it all played in one place? Uh, so yeah, we we travelled around. Um, so it started off in Canada, played played that game, and actually. <laughs> strangely played my, my old position of fly half. Um, it was the first time I'd, I'd started a game at fly half in a long, long time. So that was good fun. Um, didn't play in the USA game and then actually flew home before Argentina, which is, like, I don't, I don't ever have any regrets and stuff, but, like, I've, I've been lucky enough to travel around the world and, and go to some amazing places. But for some reason, Argentina is the one country, whenever we've had a tour there or there's been a potential to go there to play, I've either been injured or just not selected or for whatever reasons. And so it was the one place that I've, I've no always wanted to go and play, play rugby in, but I've never managed to get there. So. What do the guys say about it? You know, teammates, is that a good place, good place to go and play? Yeah, it, it is. It's like, I think it, it's one of these places is that it depends where they decide to play the test match. Um, I think there's a couple of great cities to go play in. The fans are crazy because they're passionate, they're loud. It's it's a pretty hostile environment. But then you've got like the the food aspects of the steak, the wine, um, and because on on these tours they're quite good at giving you a bit of downtime that you can go and enjoy enjoy little bits. Um, and I love my food and, and and my drink. So and in in healthy quantities. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I now work in the drinks industry, so I, I, yeah. I can get away with it. I think. But um, yeah. but yeah. So yeah, I would have loved to have gone to experience the the sort of food and the wine. Right? Canada's a great country. I've been to Canada. Uh, it's where awesome. I went to Toronto. Where, where mm. about you? So that one, we we actually stayed in Vancouver and we played in Edmonton, but I'd done a tour three or four years ago, maybe, I think it was, and we, we played in Toronto, um, and that was class. A great city. Yeah, great, great. Uh, it was really, really, really impressive place. 2018, you also got to go to the sunny Gold Coast. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah. Oh, for the, for the Commonwealth Games, I mean, I've been there. That's a phenomenal. That's a phenomenal place. That, uh, you know, tell me about your memory of that. Yeah, it was a funny one as well. It was um, actually like thinking about it. I was like, forgot about that. Um, and it was <laughs> one of my more recent things. Uh, but yeah, it was. That was a bit of a sort of left field um, chance opportunity to go and do that. And so I'd I'd played a lot a lot of sevens as when I was 18, 19, because I used it as a development tool. Mm-hmm. And then since then, they've gotten more serious about it. They've sort of had a core group of guys that are sort of dedicated to sevens. And, and the game's evolved a lot. It's The fitness levels are scary. The pace of it, the skills, um, it's just gone up some some serious notches. And, and it was coming up to the Commonwealth Games and and just discussed the the – coach at the time of the sevens program was was keen to include a few few of the 15s boys uh just like as an experience type thing to to help the squad and 
bring something slightly different. Um, so it was myself, a guy, George Horn, who, who's incredible at sevens and, and Lee Jones. And, and we all, we've all had a lot of experience with sevens. So it wasn't like it was a complete new jump, but it was just a, a bit of a shift. And, and thankfully Dave Rennie at the time, so I discussed with him, I was like, look, there's this potential op- opportunity to go play, play in the Commonwealth games. I was like, I'd love to do it if I could. Um, it'll be my last ever opportunity for it. Um, and he was like, yeah, if, he was like, as long as injuries and, and all that are good, um, we've got the squad to cover. You'd only miss one or two games, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he let us go. And it was just, it was awesome. We got to play, we went and played a, in, in a tournament in Hong Kong the week before, okay. which is just the most incredible sevens tournament. Um, they've got this whole South stand, which is dedicated to fancy I've dress. I think I've seen that. It looks phenomenal. Oh, it is, it is mental. Um, and we actually beat England with the last play of the game on the Friday night. Um, and it was just went, it was, we, we scored a winning try in front of the South stand and it was just going mental. And I was like, it's a shame we had to go play the next day again because it would, <laughs> would, have, been, would have been a great party. Has there been a big party? But that's yeah. the joy of professional sports. Sometimes you need to need to rein in um, and, and go and play go and play the following day. But it sounds like sounds like so then you you went straight from Hong Kong over to Oz. Yeah, over to Oz and and into the village and and it was just a really cool experience. Um, like we missed the sort of opening ceremony and things like that. But being in that sort of team environment where you're just a small part of a bigger thing. It's just like you're representing Scotland on a on a much bigger level. It's not just, just too, like so insular. And it was just a really nice thing to be part of. And, and you're interacting with not just other Scottish teams, but like, because thankfully it was in a nice hot country. It was, there was like swimming pools dotted around. And so you're sharing the yeah. pool with like New Zealand teams, um, like African nations and, and, and all these, mm-hmm. these cool, interesting people. And you just get chatting to them and, just this most incredible food hall where you go and eat. It's twenty four seven. You can just go grab food whenever you want, and um, it was just a really cool experience and, and something that I was um, really proud to be part of. And uh, it's definitely one that that I will sort of uh, cherish in a, in a different different way. I think. Yeah, I think that's the you touch on that. That's the beauty of sport, especially when you get the pleasure and you get lucky enough to play international sport, where you get to meet different people from different cultures and. You know, you, you really learn a lot. I mean, you know, some of my mates, when I would come back from being abroad in Australia, New Zealand or South Africa, they were so curious to learn, the, to hear about these stories because, you know, they're not countries that if you just, you don't get to just holiday in these countries very easily. I mean, it, it's hard, but with less the sport, especially cricket and rugby, they're both played in a lot of warm climates. You, yeah. do to, you do get to go to some pretty spectacular places that you probably would, probably would have struggled to get to if you were just a working man and you know having to go you know save up to go on these holidays it would you know it's not easy to go to these places so yeah i'm sure you do the same as i do you must pinch yourself sometimes to just remind yourself of where i've been in the world and you know the, the special things i've got to do um, Definitely. 2019 um calcutta cup match um following an injury you you, you played um was it was it can you remind me, I've written down Calcutta Cup match and you're following an injury to Stuart Hogg. Oh, no, so it wasn't the, it wasn't the Calcutta Cup game. It was, um, we were playing Australia uh, right. at Murrayfield, so it was November test. Okay. Um, this, this was a crazy weekend. And this sort of takes you back to sort of youth sort of stuff where you play back to back. But yep. um, So for, for internationals especially, you do it on the, in a club level to a degree. But you always have these, what we call 24th men. So it's you go warm up just in case there's an injury in the warm up. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I was 24th man for that game. Um, and then Glasgow had a game down in Wales on the Sunday. So it was literally just a couple of us were going to go warm up, jump on a plane, head down to Wales after the warm up. Mm-hmm. Um, but this, and because this just doesn't really happen. And then like Hoggy, I was kicking with Hoggy in the warm up. And he goes and pulls something on his hip, mm-hmm. and, uh, and and can't play. So all of a sudden, I've <laughs> I've gone from uh, warming up, about to jump, wanting to jump on a plane down to Wales, to yeah, you're about to play Australia. Um, yeah. <laughs> not really knowing like the calls and stuff. I've all my mindset is the game plan for Glasgow and the moves that we're going to do. And yeah. so I'm suddenly like, 
Like you panic mode. Probably just going through the motions, like not even, not even thinking no. about it. So, um, so that was pretty crazy and, and came on for about, yeah, got sort of 10, 15 minutes again. And, and it was a record, record victory against Australia. We put 50 points on them. Wow. Um, but again, had to, had to temper the celebration. So all the boys are loving life. Uh, Scotland uh, and actually Glasgow used to do it as well. But after the games, we'd get, once we're all showered and fed and stuff, we'd go back, get in a big circle, a few beers, sing song, have a bit of a laugh. Yeah. Um, I then got told, no, you're still going down to play for Glasgow. Uh, so you know, I might get, I might get, I might get, I don't need to go. I can be part of the celebrations. Big time. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, I was like, surely I'm not going to be asked to go down. But they're like, no, you're on a flight at seven in the morning. Uh, oh, to get yeah. down to, to go play. So I'm trying, I'm suddenly on these recovery drinks and, and trying to, and like trying to get to sleep after that. You're like, not a chance. Yeah. Like yeah, not adrenaline. Even. So I, I was just like, so fly down to, to Wales and, and um, jump off the plane to the get to the ground and, and yeah, go, go and play, start that game and, and play. And, and that was another record victory um, for, for an away game against the, we were playing the Ospreys, I think it was. And, and so it was like, although I would have loved to have been in the celebrations, it was kind of a, pretty cool moment to be part of two sort of record victories back to back and something that you just don't do in professional rugby especially you don't play games day after after another because it's just the risk of injury and the fatigue levels it just takes too long so it was um it was something very different and, and a one-off experience and there was a yeah it was a pretty cool cool weekend all in all no it sounds like it sounds like it. You, i'm sure you've got your bit of a party in the end after yeah. The, after the, so you you held out. You, you're a, <laughs> um, exactly. Well, well, that 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 was kind of um, that was kind of you know you're coming towards now the back end of your career. Um, you you now um, I believe you've been announced. Um, in 2019, you were announced as uh, the backs coach for the uh, uh, Glasgow Academicals. Um, and, and uh, are you still in that role? And and tell me about about tell me about about that. Yeah, so 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 in that role still, um, just it's just more of a hobby than anything. Um, I I don't ever want to get into professional coaching. I think there's too much pressure and volatility in it. That I've, I've moved around a lot. I really settled in Glasgow, and I'm quite happy here. It's got my young family, mm-hmm. so just they they're around the corner from me. Um, my best mate is the head coach now. Um, uh, and so we sort of we seem to do everything together now, which is probably a bit sickening. Like we've got we've got a small business together. We coach together. Thanks for taking us, it. Tell us, about your, tell, us about, tell us about your business. Um, so the year I moved back up from London, um, I was shacked up with with my mate Ryan. Uh, it was meant to just be for a wee wee while until we got got a property sorted out here. Mm-hmm. Um, ended up being five months, which actually really tested our friendship. Uh, it was me, me, my wife, him, him and his wife, and his, his wee girl. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just one night we just started chatting, and we ended up setting up a, a drinks company, and, and we mm-hmm. distilling gin. Um, so yeah, so that's been going for two and a half years, and, and been going all right. And it's been nice to have that sort of as as a sort of release from rugby at times when whilst I was still playing. Mm-hmm. to be able to go and just focus on something else um, and take your mind off rugby. And, and it's a fun industry to be in. Um, there's a lot of good people. It's, uh, there's a bit of synergy with, with sport, I think. Um, just the fact that it's the way people are, I think. Um, do, you use I a lot your, do you use a lot of your sporting contacts, I'd imagine, as, as part of your networking? Yeah, definitely. Um, I just say, like, th- drinks and, and sport are sort of pretty synonymous with whether it be sponsorships or, or events and things like that. So it's, it's certainly opened a lot of good doors having the, the rugby contacts there. And, um, and we've definitely used that to, to our sort of advantage. No, look, it's, um, it's, 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 been, uh, it's, been, it's been quite fantastic to, to talk through. I guess just a question I've got for you coming to the back end is what advice do you have specifically for a youngster coming into rugby and just a sports youngster and then from another angle just a young sports person in general what you know first of all in rugby terms but then just sports in general what what, what advice would you pass on uh i think it was specific to rugby it would just be 
one watch as much rugby as possible so you can you can learn a lot i i, I was a big believer in, and i think my, my my mom will vouch for this that i i copied a lot of sportsmen when i was a kid so i'd, I'd watch somebody on tv and, and whether it was rugby football golf i'd just watch them and and then go and replicate it in the garden and, and i remember yeah. um just pretending to be like ryan Giggs in the back garden or gavin hastings kicking uh, a rugby ball and and so you can learn a lot. So just watch sport and, and try and, and see what, what works. And then like, obviously you don't have to be a replica, but you'll find what works for you and, and, and things like that. But just enjoy it. I think if you enjoy it, you, you're going to put more time and effort into it. Listen to the coaches and, and try and just, yeah, have fun with it. I think enjoyment is my biggest thing. And in, in terms of sport as a whole and a general, go and try everything. Like, I'd, I loved it as a kid and hopefully I'll get a chance now that I'm retired that I can go and play some of these sports that I've, I've sort of neglected. I always thought I'd go back to cricket. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure my wife will let me um, after well, losing my week. You're welcome after... any time. You fancy a... I didn't realise that you're over in Glasgow, so you fancy a net any time. Give me a shout. We'll see if you come on from your, uh, from your under 15 days and see if you can get you from 9 to maybe a 50. One, <laughs> one or something. Right, I'll give it, give it, give it a crack. What age are your kids now? Uh, so I've just got the the one now. So she's she's two and a half months old. So um, okay. so yeah. So no, she she won't miss me. Um, but uh, I, I certainly years, won't. A couple more years, like, you know, a couple more years down the line, you want to be getting hard to, you know, be around. So it'll be it'd be nice for her maybe we Sunday afternoon. Your missus. Can sit and enjoy yourself with some sunshine occasionally when it happens, and you can go and smash it up. <laughs> exactly. I'm sure, there's, I'm sure there's a, but maybe not a high level Saturday league cricket. You might get found nah. upon doing that. No, no, social. Maybe some just some 2020 stuff. So it's short and yeah, sharp. Yeah. Um, don't need to. I think. It, yeah, I think the fact that. I've lost my weekends for sort of the last 14 years, so so my wife's quite excited that I might actually be able to plan some weekends with her. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure that will be short-lived. I think uh, we'll get sick of each other soon. Yeah, um, that did that, 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 that. I'm sure she'll be happy for you to pop out. <laughs> exactly. She'll be kicking me out. Um, but look, it's been a it's been a pleasure. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's amazing how you can come back together again in life. You know, I, 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 know. I give thanks to Tyler. Who's done it? Done it? Done, done, done the introduction, um, and I'm Damn. excited about getting this one out there. It's the first time I've had a had a rugby player on. I've got another rugby chap who's uh, who's due to come on as well. Um, Duncan Hodge, who's due. Oh to yeah, loves well. his cricket. Uh, Have you played against Hodge? I, I never played. I never played against him. I heard he was a. I heard he was a very very good cricketer. I think maybe he's a couple of year, couple of years older than me. Ah, uh, he would be older than you. Yeah. Uh, so um, I, I, you know, I heard he was a. He was a. He, I think he played Scotland under 19 and stuff like that. Yeah, so, I think he played played some stuff here. Yeah. So he's he's decent. I think he's down at Grange or wherever. But um, yeah, but yeah um, well, I'm looking to... forward to speaking with him. And then obviously I might, I might tap into you again at some point to see if you can maybe give me some edge because I would like to try and stay in the in the rugby in the rugby space as well. I've yeah. got football happening. I've got cricket happening. So I, I want to be speaking to a wide range of people. But you are my first. Yeah, definitely. Guest. You've been uh, you've been fantastic to talk to. I always I always hold you dear in my heart. Not now <laughs> when we were uh, when we played against each other all yeah. the go, but as my first uh, first rugby guest. I hope this gets a, a good response from the public. Um, and if you stay on, I'll speak to you in, in two seconds. Yeah, no, definitely. Thanks for having me. An honour to be the first rugby player.